Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and for today's card, I'm combining two things. Um, last week's Color Throwdown Challenge, as well as today is National Tea Day, so we are having a blog hop with a bunch of participants from Honey Bee Stamps Design Team, as well as the um, Coffee Loving Card Makers design team. So I'll have links and all that info in my blog post, which will be linked directly below the video. So since it's National Tea Day, I'm using the Honey Bee Stamps Tea Time stamp set. One of my kind of oldie but goodie favorites. I've done other videos using this set and I am stamping just some of the images onto Distress watercolor paper. I'm stamping onto the smooth side with VersaFine um, Claire ink, the Nocturne aka black ink. And I use my anti-static powder tool first and then I just use clear embossing powder. You don't have to do the embossing step. I just like doing it, especially when I'm watercoloring because it makes things a little easier and more convenient because it kind of keeps everything trapped, you know, within the lines. So I flipped the paper around and stamped all the images a second time. So I've got doubles of everything. And then I'm using, I'm working on my waffle flower water media mat that I'm just absolutely loving. And I'm using Pink Fresh Studios liquid watercolors, which I've done other videos using these. I have the old like square style bottles. They don't come like that anymore. They come in round bottles. Same stuff though, same product, everything. And I just dabbed little drops of it into the, the wells of my water media mat. And then for the actual watercoloring, very simple. All I do is I wet the area first with clean water. So the whole, you know, interior of the image is just damp. And then I pick up, I barely touch the brush to the liquid watercolors. These are very concentrated. You can see with the blue, like the minute I touch that brush to the wet area and how it just pulls the color away. Now, if I could leave it alone, <laughs> you can, like, if you can leave it alone, I think you get some really neat effects as it dries, like as it just does its own natural, you know, pulls it out and dries. But I can't, I can't, I, just, I can't, I'm trying, I'm trying really hard to, you know, let watercolor do its thing, but I just, I have major control issues. So I, you know, add the clean water, then I add the watercolor, and then I just clean off my brush and then pull the color out towards everything else. And because this is a color challenge, the color throw down challenge this week was blue, orange, and yellow. So that's why I'm using the colors I used. And then I actually mix the blue and yellow together to get green because, you know, that I needed that for the leaves and it just works. So did this same like little process with all of the colors, with all of the little images. And then for the little tags, those little tea tags, um, I just did like barely, barely touch the yellow. So it's very, very pale just to give it the teeniest bit of color. And then after everything was dry, I die cut them with their coordinating honeycut dies. And then for my card background, I have some smooth white cardstock and I am using the geometric background stencil and I am using blueprint sketch, uh, distress oxide ink. And my original plan was to just kind of start in the center and just have a very, almost like a circular blend of color, just, um, concentrated towards the more of the center of this. But I found as I went further along, um, and when I lift up the stencil, I was like, I didn't like how that looked. So I end up covering like most of this card front with this stencil, but I have the color concentrated more towards the center. And then I don't end up touching my blending tool to the ink pad again. I just keep using what's on my sponge. And it really, if I, for a lighter, if I had want, like I originally had meant to make this lighter, I actually shouldn't have even pulled out the ink pad. I could just have used the residual ink that was still in the sponge. Um, I did a video like last year on my channel, how I store all my little sponges in little clear, um, clear pocket protectors. So the ink on these never dries out. It's just good to go. And with oxide inks, I do prefer these blending tools. It just, for me, it works the absolute best with the oxide inks. So I did my little background with that and then I have to add some splatter because of course. <laughs> so I pulled out um, Spice Marmalade and Fossilized Amber uh, Distress Oxide sprays and I just shake them side to side to mix up the pigments. And then I just take the nozzle right out of the bottle and use that to add my splatter. So I splattered those onto my background and then I'm just gonna like speed up the drying process there. It only takes a couple minutes to dry, but I want, I was in a hurry as usual. So I just quickly dried that with my heat tool. 
And then um, for my sentiments, I'm using the Perfect Blend stamp set, which is one of my all-time favorites. Like, I have used this set so many times. So I'm going to stamp sentiments with that same Nocturne ink just directly onto my background here. And then I have some bright yellow cardstock that I die cut with the largest of the Scallop A2 layers wafer dies. And I'm going to adhere my stencil background to this yellow cardstock. And then once that's adhered into place, I'm going to start adhering my little tea mugs and the lemon and the little orange slices. And I'm just going to pop those up with some little 3D foam squares. So get everything kind of arranged how I want it. And then I'm just going to pop them into place and also like adhere like the little leaves. I'm just going to adhere with the craft tacky glue once I've got everything kind of positioned where I want it. So got all that done. And then for my card base, it is heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 and a half scored at five and a half. So it's a top folding A2 size card. And I'm going to stamp more sentiments from the Perfect Blend stamp set. And I have just a third mug that I had watercolored and then the remaining like lemon and little um, leaf image that I'm just going to adhere just to kind of tie it all together. Just got those adhered and then I can adhere my card front to my card base. And then once I'm done with that, I just pulled out some sprinkles from my stash. I had two left of this shade of orange in my little pack of tangerine sprinkles from Doodlebug. So I adhered those and then I adhered some hearts from, I have the little rainbow hearts and the tiny heart sprinkles. So I adhered a couple of those as well to the card front and that's gonna finish off this card. So as always, there will be a link below the video to my blog post and I'll have all the info in the blog. And then I'll also have a supply list with links. So if you want to check any of that out, you can. Thank you all so much for watching and for subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.